Once the 3D camera tracker has completed its analysis, it's up to you to connect content to the track points that it's identified. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this lesson. So go to Working Files, open up After Effects Projects, and before we open up the project, look at something. Look at this project. It has a large file size, much larger than virtually any other project except this first one, which had lots and lots of comps in it. Down here, it's a fairly large file because it's full of data that the 3D camera tracker has gathered. That's why it's so large. Well, let's open that up. The goal here is to add text to the vineyard and add some stained glass windows to these buildings, much like this. Here's the text and there's the stained glass. So we'll go to the vineyard first because it's a little bit easier to deal with. The first order of business is to select the layer and go to the effect controls panel and then click on the 3D camera tracker. It's done its work. And once it's done its work, it puts all kinds of little track points in here. Now the track points here are minuscule. As I roll over here, you see this little target pop up there, but let's increase the size of the track points over here just by rolling this to the right a bit. Now you can begin to see those track points. You can see there are lots of them. Notice ones that are closer are bigger and the ones farther away are smaller. That's translated into how the camera that's put here later reacts to the things that you put here. You can also change the target size if you want. As I move along here, you see this little target kind of tucked away there. You might not even be able to see it sometimes. I'll go in front there and you might be able to catch it, but they're too close together. There's one right there. Let's increase the target size too. What I want to do is I want to put something down the aisle here and have it kind of angle down the aisle. So I want to look for a target that seems to look more or less like it's going down the aisle, like this one right there. So I'll just click on it. That puts three little track points there that define that target. You have to have at least three to define a target. If you click away for a second and turn this back on again, you can select ones if you want. You can marquee select like this, select the whole bunch. You can click on them individually, shift click on them to get more that you want like that, just to define your own target. So I'm just gonna click away here and then pick one of these targets out again. So I'll just click off that for a second, click it back on again and hover here until I see one that seems to work for me, like right about, let's see here. There you go, I like that one. So you just click on it, and there are those three guys defining the target. And you can see it kind of angles down this aisle here, keeping in mind this is a two-dimensional video clip. Now that I've got that, I can expand the size of it if I want. I can hold the Alt or the Option key down and watch what happens to the cursor, a little double arrow there. I can make it larger or smaller, whatever I want. But no matter what I do here, I can always change the size of the text that I apply here at any rate. I'll put it like that, a little bit larger than normal. And now I right click, and that's the important thing. Just right click and tell After Effects what you want to do. Do you want to add a text layer, a solid layer, a null object layer, or a shadow catcher? And we're going to talk about shadow catchers in the next lesson. So for our purposes, we want to add text. So you create text and a camera. Now you don't create a camera every time you do this, but you do create a camera once. And you could have created a camera on your own by clicking over here. But now we're going to create a camera with some text. There you go. And there's the text. And there's the camera. Now, I showed you this before, but let's just see where the keyframes are. I'm going to press U. And all the keyframes are in the camera. The camera makes it look like the text is stuck there off into the distance. In fact, it's a two-dimensional thing in 3D space, but the camera gives it the feeling that it's going down the aisle like that. All right, once you've got it there, you need to manipulate it a little bit. You can't really expect After Effects to totally get it right. So you probably want to rotate it a little bit. So let's go over here and open up R for rotation. I could hover over here and do it as well with the Wotate tool. When you click this one, it's keyboard shortcut W, so people call it the Wotate tool. So I click over here and click on the Z axis and rotate it like so, because it really does look like it needs to be rotated on the Z axis like this. I find it's easier to use the text because it just works a little better. It's a little more refined, something like that. If I want to expand it, I can also use the scale. So go Shift S to go to scale. Perhaps I want to pull it down here a little ways. Notice the scale here is pretty large already. Click on that. I'm going to break the scale, and I want to go, let's say, X. Increase the X value. There it goes, something like that. If I want to move it a little bit, I can. I can move it down the aisle a little bit. Just grab the X there and slide it down the aisle. The camera will still be able to track this, because it's still going to be attached in the same spot. There you go. Now, of course, I can change the text. I can change it to something like a Chardonnay, or we'll call it Pinot that's short like that. All right, now we have applied this text and we can apply what's called a shadow catcher to give it some feeling like it's really up against the vineyard there, up against the vines, but we'll do that in the next lesson. But let's just see how that looks. Pull this thing forward and look at that. It's as if it's attached to those grape vines. It's really phenomenal how well that works. It's just this thing in 3D space. If I change the view here from active camera over to a custom view, you don't see the background in the custom view like this. I need to pull back a little bit. Controller command minus. 
So it's just a layer in 3D space. If I go to a side view, for example, let's go over to this left view, click on that layer, see it, or is it way off there in space in terms of where it is in 3D space and how the camera will react to it. Okay, let's go back to the standard view, active camera, and go shift forward slash to see it again. So there is how that works. Let's apply one more here. Go back to the vineyard, click on the camera tracker. I want to get one over here, let's say. So I click V to go back to the selection tool. See how that works, gets another target. Click on that one. Right click now and say, just create text. Notice we're not creating a camera now because we already have a camera. So let's create text. There's the text again. I can, let's say, adjust that as well. So click on this text. I can adjust its rotation, go to R for rotation. Let's say we want to have it tip up a little bit there. So we rotate it on the Z axis again, just a little bit. There we go. I can bring it down, selection tool and pull it down like that. There we go. That looks pretty good. And maybe rotate it on the X axis just a little bit back, just a touch like that. There we go. And again, I can change the text. Just double click on here and put in something like Merlot. There you go. How do I know these things? I live in wine country. That's why. How's that look? Is that cool? I think it's just so great that these guys are attached to those vines. It looks for all the world like they're part of the vineyard. So that is how you attach text to an image like this. And when you do that the first time, it adds a camera. Let's go over to the building here. This process is a little different. I'm going to show you a couple of processes here. I'm going to close parent for now. We'll come back to that later. I'll change the mode here to the switches for the time being as well. Let's click on the buildings, and there in the effect controls panel is the 3D camera tracker. Click on that, and there are all those points. We want to add some things here to these, I guess they would be called windows, but they're not. They're those little shapes there inside the building. So I get my selection tool by pressing V. Look at the size of those targets. Oh, they're huge. Maybe bring the targets down now, so they're not so dramatic. That's more like it. I think that actually will work there. I like that one right there. So I click on that. And keep in mind, I'm going to slide it over and fit it into the window there, or that space. All right now what I want to do is I right click, and this time I want to create a solid in a camera. We'll do a null as well in a second, but create a solid in a camera. There you go. And once the solid is created, you need to adjust it to fit that spot. So I'm going to click on it there and make some adjustments. So first of all, I can slide it over a little bit. So take the X, slide it over a little bit like that. I think it's good to put the corner pin effect on this thing so you can really get it to fit in there nicely. But first of all, I think I'll scale it down just a little bit. Press S, slide it down a bit there like that. And then slide it down a bit more like so. And now we're gonna get the corner pin effect. So I go to effects and presets, type in corner pin. There you go. And apply the corner pin effect to you. And now I'm gonna zoom in a bit. Controller Command Plus to zoom in. Now when you put the corner pin on, you make it active by clicking on it. You get these little circles here under those boxes. The circles are what control the corner pin there. So I want to bring it right to there, for example, and bring the corner pin over there. See how this is working, right? Once we get it all set up, things should settle down nicely for us as we go forward with this. So I'm not taking too much trouble here to get this exactly right, but I think you can see how that works. Now have the corner pin in there. And I think we got it settled down nicely. All right, let's just go forward and see how it looks there. We're going to move along here, see how it sticks, even when the camera kind of bounces around. It's doing pretty well. It's ticking pretty well. So now what do we do? We don't want a big green thing sitting there. We want to put something there instead. So you go back to the project panel. What I want to put there is the stained glass window, this little guy right there. If I just drag it down there, it's going to be a separate layer. It won't be part of this layer. So I want to replace the solid with a stained glass window. But the first order of business is to make the solid the same size as the stained glass window. I don't have to do this, but I'm going to do it anyways. And then I'll have to change the size again. Let's just see the stained glass with 3600 by 3600. Click on the solid here, go layer, solid settings. Not anywhere near 3600. So I go 3600 and 3600. Okay. Now I'm going to scale it down. Have it fit back in there again. Hold down the controller command key to kind of fine tune this a little bit there like that. So it fits in there pretty well. And now I'm going to replace it with the stained glass window. It'll fit right there. If I have them both selected like this, I take the stained glass window, drag it down to this track. It's going to want to add a layer, right? But if I hold on the alter the option key, now it's going to go in that layer and it replaces it just like that. Pretty slick, right? And once it's in there, now you want to worry about blending modes. So let's just go over here and switch to modes. We want to get the stainless window kind of to blend in with the background instead of looking like it was pasted on there. 
So several blending modes work here. You can look at the hard light, linear light, vivid light. All those guys kind of work when you're working with something like this on the surface. I'll go hard light and see how that works. Now it blends a little better, I think, with the background. All right, let me show you the other method. Instead of using a solid, using a null object layer. So let's go back here to the building. Keeping in mind again that the only thing with any kind of keyframes here is the camera. It's almost like magic, right? So I go back to the buildings, click on Effect Controls Panel, click on this guy to get those little points active and go to this window here. I want to pull back a little bit so I can get a better view of this thing. Okay, there you go. Something like that works. Click on that. Right click again and say Create Null this time. All right, now what I want to do is just bring in the stained glass window. So I'm going to take the stained glass window, just add it to the comp here, drag it down there, right there below the null. It's going to cover it up like mad there. Now I want to connect that to the null. So I go over here and right click and go Columns, Parent. I want to connect that to the null. Now if I click on this for a second, you can look over the right here. It says Hold Shift to move layer to location of parent. That way you get the layer to go there right off the bat. It goes wherever the parent is. So I'm going to grab the pick whip, drag it over to null, and hold down the shift key. And now it's going to put it right where the parent is. I go here and click on S to get scale. And now it's not 3D yet, so i got to make it 3D first. So I switch back to switches and turn on 3D for stained glass. And now I'm going to shrink it down to the size. Have it go right into place where it belongs, right to the null object layer there. You see that? Now we need to adjust the null object layer a little bit. So I go over here and change its position, go to... Let's say P for position, slide it over a little bit. We can do that right here with the X and the Z. There's X, slide it over a little bit like that. Rotate it a little bit, R for rotation. Rotate it, let's say, on the Z axis a little bit, like so. And now we need to do the same thing we did before, except we don't do it to the null object layer. We do it to the stained glass. So we go over and get the corner pin and drag it down to the stained glass. We apply corner pin to it to do that little task. So I'm going to go in a little closer, Controller Command Plus to go in there. Slide over a bit so I can get a better look at this little corner pin guy there. Get it up there for that little spot there. Get the corner pin over here, down to the corner here. A little less responsive when you're working with something attached to a null object layer than working with it directly. Hold down the space bar and go down here. One more to go here. We'll drag that up a little bit farther. Now oh, we got it. So we're kind of going through this rapidly here, but I think that's going to look pretty good. Shift forward slash to pull all the way out. Let's add a blending mode for that. So switch back to modes here. Blending mode for this stained glass. We'll have that be something like vivid light. Other one here was what? Hard light? There you go. So now you get vivid light and hard light. They both look fairly similar. We'll click away to get those guys to stop having their arrows there. And let's move forward and see if these guys actually stick there. How about that? Is that not great? And of course, if you want to do this all the way to the end here, you want to add the third one there to fill it up. Maybe in the fourth and the fifth, if you want to go nuts, even the ones down here as well. Go for that as well. But I think you can see how that works. We were able to get things to stick to the scene using text, a null object layer, and a solid, and then swapping the solid with the, the thing we want to put there instead. And it doesn't have to be a still image. You can put video there as well. So that, folks, is how you add content to these little track points created by the 3D camera tracker.